Welcome to the Featured Anime Podcast. I'm your host, Jack. And I'm Rick. And today we are talking about Smalley and the Forest Spirit. This week was my choice. It was, uh, I feel like it was a pretty good choice. It originally came out in January 2020 and ran all the way through the end of March 2020. Has uh, 12 episodes long. Genres of adventure, demons, drama, fantasy, slice of life. And a studio for it was a Satellite. And it was also co-produced by Hornets and Crunchyroll as well. I'm really liking some of the stuff that Crunchyroll is co-producing. Like they're, they're, I think, branching out, but they're doing a really good job by it. Yeah, I honestly got to agree with you on that. There were a couple of series that they were going to uh, produce themselves and it was going to be all in how an in-house project. And I'm glad I'm honestly glad I have not seen any of those uh, visions. Let's call it come to light. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, like they've got a good one going on right now. Um, Hopefully we'll review it one day. It's called um, Tower of God. Right. It's one of the few that I've, I'm really invested in, even though it's minimalistically done. Um, but yeah, this was a really good example of storytelling done right. It yeah. I kind of focusing, go ahead. No, I, I was going to say, I got to agree with you on that. This was actually <laughs> done right. What's interesting is, is that this is based on a, uh, web manga. So it's not your traditional media, at least in paperback form and where the, anime left off that's basically where the manga leaves off dang that's talent basically so so just so i understand web novels someone's essentially doing it for free because they like doing it right no no they're getting paid oh. there's just no traditional media for it so you you can uh, go and buy it and and it they'll probably even uh turn it into a printed for you i would i would assume i mean i don't see why they wouldn't oh. But it is a digital media that you can buy and read. Hmm. Okay, cool. Now, one of the things, though, one of the things, and here, here's kind of where I have a small problem. It's a great show. Great show. Definitely well worth the watch. It definitely does hit you in the those feels in a couple of spots. Yeah. Um, but in the manga, they have this transition for how the characters look. It was like about halfway through it. And honestly, I wish that carried over from the manga into the anime instead of them saving it for the very end. You mean like in the after credits? Yeah. Yeah, that would have actually looked pretty cool if they would have fleshed that out a bit. Oh, yeah. And this series really does not end the way you think it will end. That is an understatement. I, I was watching it, and in the last 10 minutes, it's not an M. Night Shyamalan... I guess not, it's not to that point of a twist, but dear Lord, I was expecting a more traditional, I guess, bookend would be a good point. A good way to say it. Like you, you usually say you like your bookends. Yeah. Um, I was expecting a heart wrenching, heart breaking bookend. And right at the point I was expecting it, they did a 180. And I, uh, I don't know if it both endings in my head and what actually happened are tear jerkers i don't know which ones which ones are more impactful as far as emotions go does that make sense it does it does make sense and like in one way that so well we'll get to it but it, in one way if the father figure would have passed away that that's heartbreaking because the way they were going to do it is just ugh, so sad but because they didn't uh, mm. I don't know if it, if it hurt, if it's more emotionally impactful because against all not odds, but against all uh, reason fighting against the inevitable and the way that he put it, like, I want to stay with you for every second I possibly can. Yeah. Knowing that that's not probably going to be too much longer. And what's really interesting. So how, it, how this show starts off is, you see this golem, this creature walking through this forest. And he says, golems have a lifespan of exactly 1000 years at the thousandth year. They die. Their, their functions cease. Well, he's only has about two years left 
when you're first introduced to him and he meets this little human girl who he names Somali and he decides he's going to uh, through some perseverance and you find this out like what episode 10 what really happens it was a weird weird like how they went through that i did not like the the origin story showing up near the end but it also it it kind of brings it all to uh together i mean it was weird yeah. at where they brought it in it could have been better if it was brought in earlier but you had to see that progression for him to basically see where he's at emotionally to to that point for for everything that happened in the past to make sense cuz when you see him or when he's talking he says golems we don't have hearts we don't have emotions we lack that and somali always tells him no you you have emotions you this happened you have emotion this happened you have emotion and he he completely disregards it but says continuously that he doesn't have emotion and everyone else around him too and they see and point out certain things to him at the same time they tell him that is very that is a very father figure-esque type thing now the journey that they're going on is he is trying to find humans to leave somali with because he's not going to be around much longer he he only has and they they specify a time range every so often so that way you know exactly how much time is left and they're going on this journey to try and find humans and it goes from like i have one year 200 and something days i have a year and 100 and something days and then it i have 300 and something days and then by the time the end comes he goes i don't know how much time i have which yeah. suggests that he has already passed that 1,000 year mark. Yeah, I feel like. And see, what was kind of cool to me is the way they kind of did his whole, well, if I, if I can serve my strength, if I can serve my energy, I might be able to last this much longer, you know? Yeah. And the way, they, I don't know, like the way that it came to my attention that he was probably past his expiration date, so to speak, was when he started started to legitimately fall apart like that was that was the point when i was like oh this is it and then he survived past it i went what maybe he's i was hoping he might have evolved past that if that makes any sense right and so the reason why they're having a really hard time finding humans though is because humans are super cowardly and super prejudiced against anything that doesn't look like them yeah one of the really cool interesting subtle i, I would say I, I can't stress this enough subtle nods to the innocence of a child oh yeah was the way that all the adults and all of the the people who should know better they the, they they treat this whole i'm gonna say existence as a learned prejudice yeah that the adults are teaching the kids the prejudicial uh, ways and that if you just have the innocence of a child, like Somali does. Now, Somali was, for lack of a better word, a slave or food. Because that was the only use, the, uh, what they call them, grotesques? Yeah, grotesques. Yeah. Even that, even that, the name is super otherly, if that makes any sense. Yep. The name, they named everything that does not look like them grotesque. And you find there's a story much, you find it later on that, well, we used to live in peace, but the people were so prejudiced that are so prejudicial towards things that didn't look like them that we could not live in harmony. And if we can't live in harmony, we are going to survive. It was every everything for itself. Basically, yeah. And what's really interesting is when they do revisit that story. It is, again, a golem that's around all these people, and the people, for whatever reason, don't view the golem as a grotesque, mainly because they he's probably allowing them to live there. Um, or or protect, or maybe, maybe, this is kind of an idea I had, maybe they learned that from him, you know, because mm -hmm. he, he identified, in, in the story, we find this out, a, a witch travels to there because they look similar, they're not treated horribly, but the golem names the witch a grotesque you are a grotesque thing and you must leave 
Well, everyone else sees it too, but he already knew that she wasn't human when she first showed up. Yes. Yeah. No, but in order to save her, essentially, he had to pretend. Yeah. He, he had to pretend that he didn't know. And it wasn't that she was called a grotesque for the first time. It's they were already calling, they called another creature a grotesque. And that's when the witch first realized the prejudice of these uh, people to the extreme. And it also helps really summarize what you were t- just talking about, where the innocence of a child doesn't understand or really see that prejudice. It's what's taught upon you and what, what you learn from those who are older than you, who are your parents or your guardians or whoever else is in a higher or teaching position. I mean, it's definitely, I'm not going to say eye opening because it's something that I was taught as a child. Don't judge a book by its cover, Mm -hmm. but that that's taken, I guess, to the logical extreme where, you know, some people just aren't taught that. Yeah. And it's sad. It is. And, and again, referring back to the witch, she meets this little girl and the little girl, despite having already knowing these prejudices still is wanting to be her friend because it's not fully ingrained into her. It's tragic. It is. Which brings us back to Somali. Somali being like a nine, 10 year old really has no grotesque views, so to speak on any of the non-human creatures that are out there, which you have uh, golems, witches, harpies, uh, you know, variety of different shapes and sizes and demons and everything else and has no prejudice against them and shows them all equal kindness and is treats everyone equal. And yeah, you can't, I guess you couldn't ask for a better ambassador. Yes. That'd be the best way I can even describe what Somali was. And despite that, you still had people that were trying to kill her. Yeah. Because as they said at the very end, you know, human children are very expensive, very valuable for their meat or for other reasons. I couldn't tell you, but yeah, apparently children were very valuable. And humans were very hard to come by as it was. Mainly because they ate all of them. Like there was, there would, for, for lack of an understanding, there was a war and we lost because we were either cowardly or whatever. And it's kind of worrisome because you actually come across another character earlier on who claimed to be peace loving, claimed to be gentle, things like that. And you come to find out that this this character's greatest sin in their eyes, in their own eyes, was the fact that in order to survive, they had to become like what they hated. And what they hated were grotesques that hunted. And in order to survive, he, his wife, and his child ate, I would say, like a harpy. Yeah. Would you would you say that, that that's that's the image that comes to mind when, when you see the gro- this child grotesque? Well, that's actually what she said she was. The oh okay yeah she was a harpy so uh yeah that definitely comes to mind uh Uzoi was a uh, harpy and she was actually with a human who ate a uh, harpy and why it wasn't cooked I don't know I mean like they made it seem like he ate the he his wife and his child ate the harpy raw but in doing so it killed his wife and his child. And is killing him. Slowly but surely, yeah. And it, it's it's oddly unfortunate. It is very oddly unfortunate because there's nothing he can do. Yeah. To either save himself or or her. Yeah. You know? Like, she's wanting him to survive. And so you can't save her from the pain of mortality. You can't save your children, even adopted, from the pain of consequences that you had. Yeah, exactly. And... It really, this whole show just really hammers away at mortality and just trying to enjoy the time that you have with your loved ones and to enjoy the smaller things in life rather than 
enjoying enjoying more complex things like you know oh i want to be able to go and and spend and build all this it's like i what do you want to do i want to spend time with you i just want to be with you so the whole thing the, the whole story i hate to go back to it but it, it it's a weird lesson i guess you know how old stories used to like convey a, a lesson in like you I don't know. Like the old folk tales you would hear have like a lesson to be learned from it. This kind of browbeats you, but not knowingly browbeats you into being into understanding that you don't judge a book by its cover. Things are not always what they seem and you can change your ways. Because some of the villains who are like humans are this way and they'll never change when Somali acts in a completely opposite way of what their their predetermined notions are there's only one that we don't know that actually makes a change, but the rest of them are like, Oh, maybe not all humans. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. But then not everyone knows that Somalia is a human. True. True. And that's <sighs> the only one that does is, uh, obviously the golem, the Oni yeah. clan. So Shizuno and Yabashira. And then that one, witch knows, and her response is, then all hope is not lost. Because obviously she knows that that little girl is not not a minotaur, which is what everyone's pretending to that she is. And we never really ever saw another minotaur, huh? Yeah. So it that was per, weird. It, well, maybe it just suggests that they are rare. But everyone's always remarking, oh, I haven't seen a golem before. They, they never remark it. Oh, look, it's a young Minotaur. That's uh, uncommon. Maybe. I don't know. That is a, it's an interesting point. Maybe well, the they're common kind of enough annoyed. to not be maybe. surprised when, well, pr- actually re- the reason why they were seeing a golem, how rare it is, is because golems never leave their forest. True. True. Well, the thing that kind of annoyed me, like throughout the whole thing, the people that got close enough to recognize what the smell of a human was or the taste of a human. They never ask those monsters, those grotesques, Hey, where did you happen to find these mon- these, these humans at? Probably because they'd be like, well, we ate them all. But I mean, wouldn't if, if I'm going to go fishing and I see someone who just ate fish, Hey, where's the best fishing spot? Oh, right up over there. You go there. That, that would make sense to me, but they never went that route. I don't know if it was because it was just too dangerous because of the girl or. Well, the other thing is, is obviously if that person knows that they're hiding a human, they're obviously not going to tell them where the rest of them are. True. True. But as you saw, the golem goes off on his own quite often. So I don't know. It, it's just, it was one of those weird unanswered, unresolved, unexplored things. But finding the humans, I don't think, was the main purpose of the story. It was the main purpose of their travel, but it was not the main purpose of their story. And I really liked the fact that the golem, it's, he seemed like if you took logic to the extreme, that was what he is. And for the most part, that is how, that is how true he stayed. But there's like little, as his skin started to fall off, I would say humanity started to seep in. Yeah emotions so to speak as he puts it yeah i thought that was a really nice little change i guess would be a good way to put it yeah it was gradual enough that i didn't notice it but i went back and i watched the first episode and the contrast was extreme and it's like you said i mean i understand why they wanted to put the the origin story of where they met so late in the anime because the the change is so well done and so gradual that you don't notice the change you don't notice how harsh he was at the very beginning how, not necessarily how unfeeling but how meticulous and i'm not doing it for your emotional health i'm doing it for your physical health how he was you know yeah and then towards the end it was i am doing everything i can to protect that smile and i will do anything to protect that smile and, and that's the real transformation. It moves from a, I'm a golem and this is a human child, so I'm going to do what I can to protect it to make sure it gets to where it's supposed to go to, to a, I'm going to protect my child and I'm going to do everything I can to protect her smile. 
And what's more is the other two individuals that find out or realize that she's human, like Shizuno, who knew from the time he had put the uh, cream on her scraped knee, he knew right away, but didn't try to f- attack, didn't do anything. He left it. And then he brings it up later on in the series. And then once the golem realized that they are a friend, that they're not going to attack her, he he is a little bit at peace. He's at ease knowing that if something were to happen to him, she would still be safe. Yeah, you could almost, even though he didn't show any emotion, I would say that the way they drew him, his posture, I'm not going to say slouched, but he relaxed. He wasn't so rigid. Maybe that was just me projecting, but that that's what I saw. You know? Does it make yeah. sense? Well, also, he, uh, when he's getting ready to walk out of the house because they're staying at this inn, he starts listing. He starts going off all this information in case he doesn't come back. He's like, Hey, you need to know this. You need to know this. You need to know this. He just wants to try and tell someone just in case, because he just cares so much about Smalley and Shizuno and Yabashira both care so much about Smalley as well. And they don't care that she's human They care that she is smiling and having fun and that she's full of joy and life. The innocence of a child. It comes back to it. Exactly. This is by far a, a great series and it's truly wonderful and how it ends. I, yeah, it leaves it open, but at the same time, it's kind of closing the chapter. It just closed it a different way. Yeah. So they're still going off. They're going on their journey but it's not so much of a time crunch and that he's about to die. It's a, they're on this journey together and they're going to continue on this journey together. Because as we had stated before, by the time the end comes around and he's getting ready, you know, to just like succumb to the forces of nature, Somali does everything in her power to try and find him and is crying for him. And She begs him not to go, and his response is, I will fight against everything. I will do everything I can just so I could see that smile for one extra second if I have to. Yeah. And and again, you know, it also transpires. It's he no longer knows how long he has. He's no longer adhering to that specific time clock because he doesn't know. That time time frame, as far as we know, has already come and gone. And now his very core his whole purpose now is just to make sure she smiles it was it was sad and i good i saw that yeah it was amazingly good i noticed that at the end he was bandaged almost from head to toe do you think that might granted this is speculation because he's never needed bandages before is it possible that those bandages are somehow i'm not going to say healing him but keeping him together probably when he's sitting there talking to Somali about wanting to stay there, part of the part of his face is uh, exposed and it starts as if he were crying to ooze out his blood, his internal fluids. And so yeah. I w- and also Shizuno is a medical expert. So she could be doing or he could be doing rather what he can to try and help the golem along and survive longer because he did take a piece of uh, the golem's skin for testing and, you know, could have been already working on something after he found out that the golem doesn't have long to live. So do you mind if I go into like the land of make believe, if you will, of the what ifs, like how I wanted to see this end, because I think we've covered everything that already did happen. Sure. All right. So what I wanted to see happen at the very end was one of three different endings. I wanted either the golem to suffer a regeneration or a transformation, meaning he overcame the limitations of being a golem. He understood feeling. In a sense, he had the Pinocchio ending where he's now a real being rather than a, a golem that was constructed for a purpose. The second one was... Now that he had found purpose, he still deteriorates and it's just super sad. And 
you see the earth, I guess, consume him again. And what's left is now a new golem. But instead of the purpose being to protect the, instead of the purpose of uh, the golem to protect the force, it now has the purpose of protecting Somali. And the third and final one that I was hoping for, that I would have been content with, was if he simply withered away and Somali was just left there crying. And then the Oni clan came up and said, it's going to be okay. We'll, we'll always be here for this. And then they, they create a kind of shrine for the golem and the epilogue or the, the ending credits, you would see them coming back every so often with like every few years or every year to commemorate who the golem was. And the final scene would have been her dying right next to the grave. Hmm. That'd be interesting. Those were the those were the scenarios I saw play out. Um, but like I I like this one. Don't get I, don't get me wrong. This is I'm not a writer by any stretch of the imagination, but I liked this because it, it it didn't go with any of my expectations, even though it felt like it was about to. Oh yeah. And don't get us wrong. There's a lot that actually goes on in this uh, series. A lot happens. There's a lot of good points, a lot of downers. Um, but this series as a whole, what we talked about, that's what really spoke to us. Yeah. And I got to say, this is this was a great series. This was well worth the time. So, yeah, I'm very glad you chose it because that that made me finish it. Good. Um, and also, it basically ended where, like I said, where to my understanding is where the manga is currently stopped at. So, I don't see it continuing. I don't see it moving forward in any any capacity because if they did, I think it would tarnish the the, the journey that that was had. Yeah. All right, sir. On a scale of up to 10, how would you rate it? I don't want to keep handing out 10s to Slice of Life's. Um, <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> because I don't, I, I don't like them. I don't. Yeah, I, and I yet you recommend some and even I, have uh, told us to watch some, so. <laughs> it, it sucks, but I'm going to say a 10. Because I, I, even though I, I don't want to give it one, against my better judgment, I, I, I got to give it a 10. Because the story was really well done. The lesson in the story didn't feel like it was browbeating. It, it didn't it didn't come up so often. You know what? They showed you rather than told you. Yeah. That that that's why I didn't until this review, it, it didn't come to mind that this was an issue. Yeah. And I honestly I gotta agree with you on that. I I give it a 10 because of all of that the story behind it, the lesson that's within it, how much it, it allows us to also reflect on ourselves with how great the story was told and the world that they were in, the animation, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. I did, yeah, the, the colors that they were able to throw together, the imagination. There's a cat with three tails, which I know is part of, um, I want to say, it, it's part of lore um in japan i think it is um like a cat with three tails is is has one that's ascended or something like that and but there's also like a jackrabbit a rabbit with horns um just and, and the sheer take and the uh differences in all the different creatures of that world not everyone looking identical everyone looks different or just yeah. different enough even when you see the other golem in the story of the witch, the golem doesn't look identical to the golem that we've been seeing the whole time. Yeah. And I thought was thinking about that because when the, when the golem showed up on the Island, I was thinking to myself that maybe that's what it looks like once a golem has passed its expiration because all the skin was gone. Yeah. But maybe it was just how it was built, which is a very good possibility. So yeah. All right. I would recommend this to anybody. Most definitely. Most definitely. This is well worth your time to watch. It is something uh, apparently both uh, Rick and I highly recommend. <laughs> so uh, next week is your choice, sir. I believe it is. Now, I'd like to go for a little bit of a, 
a funnier take because we just went through some depressing stuff with this. Okay. Um, mine, my choice is witchcraft works. It is action, sanding, supernatural, and fantasy. It's 12 episodes long, and I I wanted to watch this. I think it's going to be good. All right. Sounds good to me. So, uh, witchcraft works. Well, that's uh, about all the time that we have for today. Um, if you have your own take, your own view on... Uh, or, uh, Somalia and the Forest Guardian or any of the other shows that we have uh, talked about or movies or if you have a recommendation on what we should watch go ahead and reach out to us Uh, all our contact information in the show notes Um, you can also leave a comment on YouTube as we do post our podcast on there as well and uh, feel free to reach out to us and join us in our discord link for that is also in the show notes until next time I'm Jack And I'm Rick, and we'll see you next time.